All right, we're starting. Hello and welcome back to Media Munchies Podcast. Now you may be thinking, it hasn't been so long since Media Munchies, and it's because I really want to put out an episode by two days from now. So this is a very quick one, but I don't think it's rushed because I put a lot of heart into it because I've been listening to this album nonstop. However, before we get into the album, I need to talk about something serious which is the things that are happening in the world right now and the fact that the government, the police, other people in positions of power have been using this power to perpetuate the oppression of black people and it's not right and people have been taking a stand against these people. So what I'm going to do in order to support this cause, I'm going to leave a couple links in the description of how you can donate, sign petitions, or even just stream songs on YouTube in order to donate because people donate their AdSense revenue to the cause. So with that being said, Black Lives Matter, and let's get back into the podcast. So yeah, as I was saying, this might seem like I'm rushing since I have two days to edit, but I really want to put this one out for the anniversary of a very special album that has been dear to my heart for many years. It's Take a Vacation by The Young Veins. Now, you may be wondering, who are The Young Veins? But if you know me, you may be wondering, why is Logan regressing to high school phases right now? And let me just tell you, this album, it still stands up. Like, this album is still iconic to this day. I've been listening to it recently, and all songs are really good. They're really good, and I I miss this phase of my life, I'm not gonna lie, (laughs) because I think my music taste was good. (laughs) I don't want to say it like that, never mind. But I miss this phase of my life because I had this genuine, true love for the music that I listened to, and it was clear how much I love this album because just listening to it has brought back so many memories. So basically, The Young Veins, right? I want to give you a brief history of this band. And we we need to start the beginning, of course, with Panic at the Disco, (laughs) a band that maybe you've heard of, High High Hopes for a Living, you know? (laughs) And the OG members of this band, excluding Brent Wilson, we don't need to talk about him, were Ryan Ross, Brendan Urie, John Walker, Spencer Smith, and I love them all, (laughs) even the ones who have betrayed us. Okay, anyways, the thing was, they were killing it at one point when they released Pretty Odd, a masterpiece of an album written mostly by the lead guitarist Ryan Ross, and it's a life-changing album. However, there were musical differences, and the band came to an end. So basically, Ryan Ross and John Walker left the band. Yeah, I love John Walker as well. And shout out to Spencer as well. We know Brandon, you know, can't spell awesome without me. He's no longer with us within this realm of good music. Unfortunately, he had to pass on. (laughs) I know, I'm sorry. I, I still love him. I still love him. So anyways, getting off topic here, Ryan and John left. They formed a band called The Young Veins. And I need to shout out the other members. So Andy Sukel played the bass. I might be saying that wrong. Nick Murray played the drums and Nick White played the keys. And I know that Ryan and John were like the main dudes, but like the band wouldn't be the same without the other band members, obviously. And I even have an inside joke about quote unquote the drummer from the Take a Vacation video because he was playing drums and his hair was in his face and yeah, that was funny, (laughs) you know. Yeah, so Take a Vacation is basically their album and they released it June 8th, 2010, so 10 years ago. Imagine that, 10 year anniversary. But, you know, I obviously did not listen to it in 2010 because I was a child (laughs) and I didn't have music taste really back then. Like, I think I just got into pop songs in 2010 and I listened to, like, whatever was on the radio. So, yeah, I listened to them first in 2013, 2014, maybe. And I loved them because I loved Pretty Odd and it, I think, had some Pretty Odd vibes. 
and it had that kind of Beatles-ish Beach Boy kind of vibe that I've I mean I've liked the Beach Boys because I sort of grew up like my mom really liked them and then I like the Beatles because my dad liked them and it was kind of like the the music that I listened to before even the pop on the radio. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And the thing is, right, I really liked the Young Veins, even though it wasn't exactly like Panic at the Disco, but it was like it carried enough of unique influences as well as influences from Panic that it just it really stuck with me. And the thing is, they don't have a lot of fans because even hardcore Panic at the Disco fans, some didn't like their new music, or some didn't like the Young Veins music, and they didn't gain many new fans besides that, which I think is sad, because they're very good, in my opinion. I'm gonna do a lot of hyping this shit up, (laughs) to be honest, and basically my personal history with them is like, I listened to them at the cottage, I remember with my friend Sarah. Shout out to Sarah. And shout out to Amy. Like, I don't know why I didn't say her name before. I was like, yeah, my friend and I had an inside joke. Like, no, shout out to Amy. Shout out to Sarah. Y'all are getting shout outs on this one. But anyways, I would listen to the Young Vans (laughs) at the cottage. And it was just the perfect summer music, you know? It's like, I need to take a vacation. Like, yes, we're going for the summer, we're going to the cottage, we're vibing on this, because I just love, I just love that summer vibe, and yeah, (laughs) we have Gari over here who loves that summer vibe. Uh, I need to say more than I thrive in the summer. Yes. I live for the summer. Yes. I die for the summer. And this is a great episode to be releasing before the start of the summer. Just like the album was a great album to release before the start of the summer. And yeah, this is going to be a lot of me hyping up this album. But you know what? Here's a little something for you. Music is subjective. No one's opinion of music is completely objective. And I know what you're thinking. Well, my favorite music reviewer, Anthony... uh, um, Who? Uh, What? No. No one's opinion is without their own biases. I don't care how much music you've listened to in your life. And I'm not just saying that because I... I don't know. I I have a music taste. I've listened to... A moderate amount of bands. I'm not saying I'm the most like pff, music person ever. So why are you doing album reviews? Because I want to, bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm Shit. saying? Okay. Uh, so you know, nice. I have a moderate amount of music knowledge. It's not much. I don't know what I'm talking about, and I'll just I'll be the first to say it. So yeah, I'm hyping up this album because I like it. I'm not like inspecting it under a microscope to find what true good music is. No, 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 no. My ratings are just based on my opinions and that's how it should be, you know? Fun times, loving music, having a good time about it, not shaming other people's opinions. Thank you very much. That's it. And I'm not talking about a person. I'm talking about like the fan base of a person maybe or the fan base of certain types of music that think they're better and superior for liking certain types of music and for having certain opinions about things. It's like... You don't need to do this. You don't. <laughs> that was a that was a tangent. But anyways, I love this album. Some some things that I do want to say about the album is that I like how they stay within their genre and their distinct style, but they every song on the album is unique and stands out in some way, and I I think it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful the way it's done. And I truly I just love this album and I love their style of it too as I said it's like Beach Boys retro pop rock Beatles and it just hits all the marks that that genre needs like it ticks all the boxes of this style of music I think but the first song it's called Change and I'm gonna go through the track list right now basically the first song called Change is a perfect example of it because the music video even it looks like an old black and white Beatles music video and they look like the Beatles like I know Ryan Ross loved the Beatles. He wanted... Okay, no, I don't want to... Yeah, no, don't go there. You know, and you know what? Valid. Pop off. Because I think they did a great job with it. And I don't want to say the young veins. You know the meme that's like, something is better than the Beatles? (laughs) I'll just say the young veins are better than the Beatles. What the heck? I know know Ryan Ross wouldn't be happy for me, (laughs) even though I'm complimenting his band, but I'll say it. 
you know what? Okay, so we're gonna get into the tracks. I need to pull it up on my phone. I don't know if it's better than the Beatles, though. Okay, the thing is, I know the Beatles have an extensive discography of many unique songs, and this band has one album, but I would say this band is more near and dear to my heart than the Beatles. That's so, valid. in that respect, as I said, art is subjective. Valid. So, we're gonna go into my notes <laughs> and take a look so the first song change i think it's ooh, best album opener ever iconic not okay not best ever i'm just gonna tone it back a tiny bit tiny bit <laughs> whew, whew, calm down okay so very good album opener it hits with the energy right away it's like change 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 <laughs> you know what i'm saying the best lyrics like i cannot handle how good the lyrics are it's like the root messages in the chorus and then we've got like this storyline of like pretty ain't a job this girl who like thought she was the coolest and like she was like a hypocrite or whatever and like she didn't change you know <laughs> sorry that was the worst explanation in my life but besides that the instruments i said the bass is excellent good job to andy and the guitar solo oh my god and watching it in the music video was iconic. To see John Walker, the legend that he is, perform that guitar solo was breathtaking. So I gave Change a 9 because it's such an iconic song. Great album opener. No complaints there. No complaints. The next song is Take a Vacation. And this song is like so nostalgic for me. And I'm sorry if I'm blinded by nostalgia, but it's just also a great damn song. It's the perfect summer song. It's like vibe up to here. <laughs> Sorry. Vibe, vibing, chilling, chilling in the summer, taking a vacation. And I hope you're all there. Like they're at the ocean. Oh, the music video is great too because it's like summer vibes. Like summer vibes, dude. Like Cody Co. Anyways, I also said the guitars are great. Throughout the whole album, the guitars are really excellent. And I'll be mentioning it again. And I think this was my fave. I wrote fave for a lot time. I don't know what that means. I write things and then I don't remember that I wrote them. <laughs> I should have more organized notes, but I did write some organized notes for this one. You'll probably be able to tell. I am just like living my Virgo life. I'm not a Virgo, but you know, I'm taking, I'm taking tips from the Virgos. And we'll be getting back to that in a second. That was so... I changed topics like five times per second there, and that was not Virgo of me, that was Aries Moon of me. And end of discussion. The next, oh wait, I gave Take a Vacation a nine, because it's so iconic. The next song, Cape Town, another legendary song, especially in Panic at the Disco and Ryan Ross history, because the story is that Panic at the Disco had their last gig in Cape Town, and there's the lyric, I left you in Cape Town, which is like, they left the band. Ooh. But there's also like a storyline behind the song, which is like meeting somebody in Cape Town. Like Ryan Ross is said to have met some girl in Cape Town and had like a little love affair. And I really like the way the story is told because it's like, is he interested or is he not? Because he's like, I loved you. But then he's also like, I didn't mean it because it's like, ask me if I meant it, I didn't. <laughs> it's like, no, he didn't mean it, right? And then there's another plot point about she had a husband in prison and it's like, damn, this story is riveting. And even the bridge with going to a graveyard to bum flowers, like to give to this person. It's just like, oh, it's such a vibe. And even it gives me a Beach Boys vibe because there's a lot of ba 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 ba, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, it's a really good song. I gave it a nine as well. Next song on the list is Defiance. I don't like this one as much because I think it's a bit repetitive. Because I like the riff. The riff is repetitive. The riff that's like... -na 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 -na. <laughs> okay, but anyways. It's very repetitive, but I like it. So it's kind of like... Uh, but I, I like it more than I dislike it. So I gave it a 6+. plus, As well as the story of the lyrics is a bit confusing. Because it's like defiance. But I do like the lyric, I fell in love again with defiance. Because it's pretty good. Yeah. It's just, this one never caught my attention that much. But Gari likes it, and 
I'm happy. <laughs> well, it doesn't hit as bad as the others do, and I would let you get to that. <gasps> oh, God. But, now we're thinking about songs that hit. Oh, goodness. But Defiance, you know, for an underdog song, not a bad thing. Yeah. I like it. I Defiance. do like underdog songs. So, go Defiance, but still 6+. The next song on my list is Maybe I Will, Maybe I Won't, which is one that is sung by John Walker. Oh yeah, like basically most of them are sung by Ryan Ross. Some are sung by John Walker. And I like Maybe I Will, Maybe I Won't, but I used to just not pay that much attention to it because, I don't know, it's sort of different. It's, it kind of has like a... Well, that's literally the song. But like, it's fun. The lyrics are fun. But it's just not one that I've paid attention to the storyline or really the vibe as much, you know? And I gave it a six plus. The next song is Young Vane's Die Tonight. This song has like this simple genius to it. And it's like, people might complain that Ryan Ross didn't write these genius mind-blowing lyrics on this album when you know he could have, obviously, because of Pretty Odd. But the thing is, they've got such a simple genius to them, and it's like, you can't write a second Pretty Odd, but you can write something that is still very, very good. And the Young Veins Die Tonight, it's basically, the choruses are like, we're having a party, we're young, it's we're having fun. And the verses, they go into this depressing thing, and it's like, but what if I were to die tonight? <laughs> and it's like, whoa, okay. I love it. The reason I didn't give it like a higher score, I gave it a seven, by the way, is because it's, it's simple. But I will stand by the fact that it's simple yet effective. The next song, The Other Girl, I'm just gonna say, <laughs> I'm just gonna say, this song, I love. It has feeling behind it. Now, the first couple songs weren't really about... Like, they had these storylines, the Cape Town storyline, but I feel like The Other Girl's the first song that you can understand the storyline as well as relate to it, and I think that's very important in music. And I really like the guitars, first of all, and I really like... I feel like both the choruses and the verses are, like, so good in different ways because it's like, don't wait around for love so basically they're both like high energy and they're both like they hit hard and they're like boom boom and then the chorus is like you you were right and then i was wrong <laughs> like and it's like whoa that vibe you were right i was wrong like i always am and you always are hard for a virgo to admit to be honest <laughs> but anyways there's also the lyric they will send him straight to jail the cat is here yeah, so the cat ruined our shit. <laughs> okay, the cat didn't ruin shit. The cat just jumped and paused the recording. So now we're picking up. I said that the lyric, they will send him straight to jail, is interesting because of the lyric in Cape Town where he says she already had a husband in prison. So it's like, what's this jail prison vibe that's going on? Is Was somebody, was there a husband in prison? Like, I know that's a stupid question. <laughs> Never mind. Maybe I'm just making stupid, like, observations here. Yeah, so I gave the other girl an 8 because it's really good. It's really good? Yeah, it's, it's great. The song is fucking great. Thank you. I'm so glad you like my music. Yeah, I, I always the other girl that. hits. Yeah, that's That's hits. the song I was talking no, about when I said there's another hits. song that hits, but we'll be getting to that very shortly, in fact. Another thing about the other girl is the guitar solo is very good as well. So, good job, my boys. <laughs> Ryan Ross and John Walker, guitar legends. So, the next song that hits is called Lie to the Truth. And I have never had a song that hits more in my life. Actually, I have. But, like, this song is so sad and depressing to me. And the lyrics are what make it, but it's also the feel and the vibe of the song. And I like how they did a sad song, but they also stayed within their distinct style. And they didn't do a piano ballad, because sometimes on, like, Panic! at the Disco songs, they're like, all right, how are we going to convey the sadness of this song? I got it. Piano ballad. And it's like, they've done this on, or he has done this. He, Mr. Brendan Can't Spell Fortnite Without Me himself, has done this on Death of a Bachelor and pray for the wicked with the songs impossible year as well as although impossible year was excellent and it did have good trumpets and stuff too besides pianos and dying in la which i know that gary likes it's fine it's okay excuse me that's excuse all right excuse me 
because we have a piano ballad liker here but i just don't like them using only piano ballads as like this is the sad song and i like what the young veins did with lie to the truth and i love the lyrics as i said they're very sad but the lyric who is judging who is the most virgo lyric ever and i just wanted to talk about virgos for a second because panic at the disco they're all virgos spencer john ryan and brendan is the only aries oh my goodness oh my goodness and it shows too it shows with what happened now that the band is only brendan there was also a taurus who is dallin and he's gone too so it's like no earth signs can handle an aries <laughs> but you know what earth signs can handle their own and that's why the young veins is so successful these virgo minds came together to form one big giant brain cell and i wish they would come together once again and i know john walker wants it to happen but i don't know what ryan ross is doing i feel like john walker would be so happy to collab with ryan but say la vie we'll get what we get so yeah lie to the truth very good song i gave it a seven plus i don't like it as much as the other girl because i don't know just the energy and the for whatever reason but it is still very good the next song dangerous blues this is a masterpiece let me tell you, this is so iconic. I cannot believe, because it has a bluesy feel. It's still within the genre and the lyrics. All I do is lie, pause, by the ocean side. Wow. Their minds? Incredible. Even the truth is wrong sometimes. Is that like a, a reference to lie to the truth? Because I'm digging it. I'm digging it. And just the whole concept, who knew that love was a beautiful blues, blah, blah, blah. It's so poetic and it's beautiful poetry. And this is like, if you really listen carefully to this one, you can hear Pretty Odd in it. No lie. You can hear Pretty Odd in the Young Veins. And I love it so much. It's a good, like, chilling by the beach song as well. Because, like, I don't know, lying by the ocean side. Yeah, so I think Dangerous Blues deserves a 9 plus or a 10. Because it's just that good to me. The next song, Heart of Mine, is also absolutely iconic it's so sweet it's like such a pure wholesome love song that it's great and it's not even just because of the lyrics because i i love the lyrics obviously because it's tender <laughs> you know but it's also it has a lot of backing vocals and it doesn't seem like ryan ross is like dominating the song it seems like there's quite a few backing vocalists and it sounds like everyone's coming together it's a community you know did I forget a song? Yes, I did. Okay, but we'll get to that after Heart of Mine. And it's the perfect album ender, I think, as well. Album closer, especially with the end, which is everyone saying happy birthday to Ryan. It's so cute. They're like, happy birthday, Ryan. It's great. I gave it a nine, but we're going to return to Everyone But You, which is the song that I missed. And I feel very sorry because I was too excited to get to the other girl. But Everyone But You is really a bop. It's cute underrated underdog song by John Walker and John Walker's solo music as well is really good I like okay if I can recommend one song I think the song alone is really good and I think the song illusion oh illusion and there's another song that's like it's called the truth oh my god I'm gonna play you this song after mm -hmm. and it's really relevant to like society today it's basically saying we need to realize the truth and like be kind to everybody and stand up against people and power and all of that basically it's like a revolution song i'd say and i think it talks about global warming as well i don't know but yeah that's john walker's song so look up the truth by john walker please because it's great and everyone but you iconic song i like the lyric talking to the apple <laughs> it's really cute I am left talking to the apple and I also just like the it's got a dreamy vibe because like it's talking about dreams and it's got like this chill vibe and I like the lyric a wedding ring is just a thing that weighs you down and occupies your finger and it's like oh damn and then it's like but love is all I'm really after it's really got a lot of cute mixed in vibes and fun lyrics and just chill it's a chill damn song and I'd listen to it high. This is this is the weed mention of the show. I was talking to Amy and Sarah and I was like, I think I mention weed at least once per podcast episode. But yeah, this is the weed mention. The, the disjointed one. Yeah, the disjointed one was a lot more, obviously, because it was a weed show. 
So I think that's the full track list. I gave everyone but you an eight, by the way. But I averaged out all the numbers of the songs and this album overall gets an eight. And I think it's perfect. Even though I gave a lot of songs nines, I think an eight would fully describe how good this album is to me and maybe even an A plus. I think I'm feeling generous and I'm gonna give it an A plus. A plus! <laughs> but I really enjoy this album. It's a great summer album, it's got really good vibes, and really good standout unique songs with lyrics that will hit you emotionally and also lyrics that will make you smile and lyrics that will make you just have fun, you know? And I wanted to talk about the bonus tracks before we end this review. They're covers, so I don't know, <laughs> I feel bad, I don't know who these songs are covers of, but th I know the song titles, so you can look it up if you want. Oh, I feel like I'm not informed, but I did know a lot about Panic at the Disco, so that's one thing going for me. So we have Funnel of Love, which is fun and cute, and I love John Walker singing it and it's just such a good time here I go going down 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 <laughs> and all of them are like these old-fashioned I think they're all old-fashioned songs like I don't know if they did a cover of any like recent songs because that's like the vibe of the band but Funnel of Love is such a cute song and then Is It True is a certified bop in my eyes and it's got <laughs> again it's got this old-timey vibe but I don't know, I've always liked retro music, just it hasn't been like the forefront of my music taste because like I do tend to listen to more recent music, but yeah, I hold a special place in my heart, of course. Frank Sinatra, shout out. Ugh, <laughs> homie. Shout out. Homie. Truly. So Is It True and When You Walk in the Room are both bops and they're fun and this is where songs sound a bit similar to me. I don't know, is it true? And when you walk in the room could be like extensions of each other, but they're both fun and I both enjoy listening to them. Security is the most relatable, damn Taurus earth sign song vibe. It's basically like, I need to feel secure within my relationships or else I will go crazy. <laughs> and it's like, whew, <laughs> I, I vibe to it and it hits. Yeah. It's really fun though. And then Nothing Matters But You is very cute, and it's got Z Berg on it. She's friends with Brie Larson, who plays Captain Marvel. Fun fact, Ryan Ross is also friends with Brie Larson. But yeah, so Z Berg is great. She has other music with Ryan Ross, sort of recently. It was 2018, a song called The Bad List. So another recommendation. It's really sad. It's a Christmas song, and I cry. <laughs> But I, I like their voices together a lot. And the song Nothing Matters But You is very cute. And yeah, that's the album. Take a Vacation by the Young Veins. It seems like I'm ending it very abruptly. But I'll just do an outro. I will hopefully have this edited soon. This has been a bit longer than I thought. But I believe I can do it. I will have this out by June 8th. If it's the last thing I do. Because this album means a lot to me. And I'm very happy that it's the 10 year anniversary of it. And I want to show it some love for its 10 year anniversary. So thank you, Ryan Ross. Thank you, John Walker. Thank you, Andy, Nick, and other Nick for this amazing album. It has shaped my teenhood and just my life in general. And if you haven't listened to it, you should give it a listen. But you know how the podcast works. It's only recommendations. It's only fun. It's only vibing. So that was the podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. I will also have another one up because I have another idea for another one. But this has been Media Munchies podcast. The Young Veins take a vacation and I will see you next time. Goodbye.